Okay, so we'll start into it now. So the first thing we're going to do is the first question here, we're going to create a new blank presentation. So you can see here we have file. Okay, so we click on file. We go down to new. We can click blank presentation, but because it's highlighted, we don't need to. And we just go to create over the right hand side. So you'll see it creates the blank presentation for us. We then click on the answer button. So you'll see the different buttons you have up here. You have previous, navigate and skip. Skip will just take you on to the next question. We have answer and clear. So clear will clear the question for us. If you do happen to do something wrong, because this is a sample test, you have a suspend test button, and then we've end test at the very end then. So we go to answer. Question two wants to apply a design theme or template of your choice to the new presentation. Now, a design theme affects the whole presentation, so it'll put different layouts on it, different colors and different font types. So we click on the design tab, and you'll see here we have a list of the different themes. There's a more button here you can click more from, so you can get more themes from there. There's no need, anyone will do, and we just click on answer. Save the presentation to the Z drive using the file name new. So we want to save the presentation. This symbol here, Z colon and the backslash means Z drive using the file name new. So when we're saving a file, there's always two things that we want to do. We want to know where are we saving it to and what are we saving it as. So we're saving it to the Z drive as this file name new. Notice the new has small letters in it. So we go to file. Save as. It's already clicked into the Z drive. You can see that from the top. There's the, the last one on the list at the top. If you're not sure, you can click into the Z drive just to be sure. And we want to save it with the file name new. So we just type in new in there. And we go to save. And it saved it first. And then we answer. Switch to the chess presentation. So you'll see at the bottom here on our taskbar, there's two presentations open. We have this 503.pptx, which is the one that we're on at the minute, 503. And we also have this chess presentation. So it wants to switch to a chess presentation. So we just click on it. And it switches to the new presentation. And then we say answer. We don't do that until it, just switch. Change the name and the user information to Bob Kane. We go to file and options. So these are the PowerPoint options. You can see at the minute here, the username is John Smith. We want to change it to Bob Kane. Don't be afraid that you can drag that out of the way if you just want to see the correct spelling. And we put in the initials here. I always tell people to put the initials in. Say OK. And then answer. Use the appropriate command to undo the last action. So this is the undo button here. So if we click it, it'll undo the last action. So we give it a click and you see it's grayed out now. It's grayed out when there's no actions to be undone. So we say answer. Where should you click to open the help function? This type of question here, it doesn't want you to open the help function. What it wants you to do is it wants you to click where you should if you wanted to open it. So this is the help function here. You can see on the right hand side, we have the, the blue circle with the white question mark. So we click on it, it puts the answer. So that type of question will always come up. Where should you click? And we just click on it. We answer it. Select the view mode that is best suited for quick editing. Now quick editing, there's two different ways of doing things. We can quickly arrange slides or we can quickly edit slides. If the question was to quickly arrange slides, it would be slide sort of view. But because it wants us to quickly edit a slide, it's going to be outline view. So you can see over on the left hand side here, we have slide and outline, and we just click into outline. Outline view allows you to quickly go into the different bits of text and quickly edit them. So we answer. What is considered good practice when creating slide content? So these type of questions here, these are radio buttons, so only one can be pressed at a time. So with the use of numbered lists, the use of long phrases, the use of sound effects on every slide, or the use of several different fonts. It's the use of numbered lists. These are the ones are things that you wouldn't do. 
So you wouldn't have long phrases. You wouldn't have sound effects on every slide. It would lose its effect then if every slide had a different sound effect. And then several different fonts. Ideally, you want to keep all your fonts the same right through your presentation. So we answer it. Zoom the presentation to 66%. Click into the presentation first, just to, as a make sure. Now you can move your slider bar and you may be lucky and just get it at 66%. The quickest way to do it is if you click on the number here, it will come up with an option. You can type it in or you can pick some of the presets. So it just so happens that 66 is one of the presets there. And OK, so if you feel comfortable with that slider bar, by all means, click and drag it. If not, you can use that box.